German wings crash and the efforts to find out what caused it. I'm joined by Matt Robinson in Denver. He's a aviation expert for Robson Forensics. Uh, Matt, thank you so much for joining us. You know, we've been talking about one of these black boxes uh, that was found. What exactly will it reveal? Okay, it's merely a starting point, Elaine, and that's uh, it's a good piece of evidence to have. Uh, at least uh, the, the investigative body is fortunate to have this in, in this amount of time. Uh, it's going to be escorted back to a laboratory where it will be meticulously downloaded. Uh, there might be some damage to the outer components of this and it needs to be very carefully uh, disassembled. Uh, the data must be extracted uh, very meticulously in an effort not to erase it. Merely a starting point though, there are approximately 88 parameters uh, that are monitored on the flight data recorder and hopefully uh, it will give the investigators something to start with. At this point, it's in data collection mode or the investigators are in evidence collection mode. Uh, that's great, but we need to apply information to this, to this data in order to find some type of causation. That's gonna take a while and we need to find corroborating evidence. This information that's downloaded probably shouldn't stand on its own. We need some type of material evidence to back that up. Matt, one of the biggest questions, you know, that we've been talking about here is this eight-minute descent that happened before the crash. What would that indicate, and would that or maybe not be enough time for a pilot to send a distress signal? There are so many variables, Elaine, uh, it's going to be hard to say. Now, it's not really a plummet per se. It's roughly around 2,500 to 3,000 feet per minute rate of descent. That's not entirely unheard of, okay? That's uh, not, uh, not indicative of an aircraft that's out of control or in a spin or a spiral or something of that nature. Uh, it's relatively controlled. Uh, but then add in the variables of aircrew incapacitation, possibly noise, rapid decompression, severe wind rushing through the cabin, etc. There are all kinds of things that can complicate that. And furthermore, uh, communicating is the last of an air crew's priorities. It's aviate, navigate, then communicate. Establish control of the aircraft, figure out where you are, and then communicate your intentions or what's happening. And that's last on the list of priorities. Matt, you mentioned the data collection mode, and we've all been looking at the video of this debris field where this crash took place. Um, just a lot of pieces everywhere. Talk about the pattern of the debris. Um, did this plane crash straight into the mountain? Based on what you've seen, what are you taking away from it? Well, from what the, the few pictures that I've seen, the little bit of video that I've seen, it looks like a relatively uh, low angle impact. That means that the aircraft uh, was in a relatively uh, flat attitude, wings level, uh, but a high rate of speed, okay? And you have to match that up with the angle of the terrain as well. Uh, high, high energy though, with those little pieces and the extent of the damage that we're seeing here, extremely high energy. So uh, that's again another starting point there that tells us that the aircraft was most likely controllable with regard to, to, to flight controls and things of that nature, but there was something else going wrong, wrong that uh, needs further examination. And Matt, I know we'll get into this later on in our show, but talk to us about this Airbus A30 uh, jetliner. What do you know about this type of, of airplane? Is it considered pretty safe? I mean, we've just been hearing about so many plane crashes, and I know they've been different models, but we've heard about half a dozen plane crashes around the world in the last 12 months. Airbus has a very good uh, safety record, okay? So, um, uh, and these are, these are very rare occurrences. We still need to keep this in mind that a aviation, air travel is, is, is safer than practically any other mode of transportation. Uh, it's just uh, with this magnitude of damage uh, is, is what uh, draws us in. Uh, so I wouldn't be too concerned about with the overall safety record of the Airbus products, especially the A320, a very reliable uh, product. Uh, it's these other uh, causal factors that we need to start looking into a little bit closer here. All right, Matt Robinson with Robson Forensics. Thank you so much for joining us from Denver.